My name is Jessica Phelan and I'm the media specialist at Tacoma Park Middle School. My name is Alicia Dini. I am principal of Tacoma Park Middle School. I am Latrice Rogers, assistant to the associate superintendent for the Office of Curriculum and Instructional Programs. So Montgomery County Public Schools was motivated to make digital citizenship a priority because several years ago, um, on one of our public-facing uh, pages, we noticed that there was uh, some inappropriate commenting that was happening, both among students as well as adults. And so it kind of raised to our attention that there was a need to educate people on how to interact online because our district has a commitment to creating a culture of respect. About six years ago, we started uh, seeing some of these negative social media interactions bubbling up. We started hearing about students interacting with content that we had concerns about. We started to create and kind of tailor the lessons to the situations that we saw occurring with our students. At Tacoma Park Middle School, we encourage good digital citizenship. We are a PBIS school and our core values are courtesy, safety, and integrity. And we always share with students how courtesy, safety, and integrity aren't just things that you do here within the classroom and within the walls of the school, but they should also extend into what you do online and how you interact with each other. If something negative occurs on social media or if there's a negative interaction, um, as a result of a student's interaction with technology, then that filters into the relationships that we have with one another in school. We need to kind of remove any negative obstacles to that. Uh, and having good digital citizenship is something that focuses on the positive ways that we need to interact with one another, both one-on-one -on -one and online. A lot of times what was happening was things would be occurring outside of the school day and then it would spill into the school day to create situations um, where we needed some resources to address how to interact with one another, especially as we're interacting with te technology. We were able to get people's feedback and um, use that as part of how we implemented the um, digital citizenship curriculum. But we had to do all that work up front before we can actually start what the expectations were. The actual how this works in my school is up to the individual schools. So they know what they need to do, but how they do it is really up to them. So some, um, you know, media specialists actually deliver lessons themselves. Some may work in collaboration with the classroom teacher. Some classroom teachers may just deliver on their own. We also have our school counselors who are involved in implementation. So we leave it up to the schools to do what works best for them and for their schedules. Digital citizenship supports our curriculum standards in various different ways, um, and there are different lessons that really tie in well with different subject areas. So say for example, in English class, um, an English teacher might use one of the common sense education lessons around um, copyright. It ties in nicely and it's a natural fit in that subject area. Um, in health classes, teachers might use lessons about, you know, digital safety, being online, safe chatting behaviors, bullying, and things that already are within their curriculum. We have over 160,000 students. We have about 23,000 staff members. So that was kind of our number one challenge is how do we get this to everyone. So what we decided to do because of our size is that we had a rollout plan. So we couldn't implement all at once. Students at the elementary level receive a minimum of three lessons over the course of the year. At the middle school level, students receive a minimum of four lessons over the course of the year. And at the high school level in grades nine and 10, that students receive a minimum of five lessons over the course of the year. 
Some of my biggest challenges with implementing digital citizenship at our school um, were just coming up with the initial plan of how we would roll everything out and um, letting staff know what the plan was and making sure that our message to staff was consistent and that the way that the lessons were rolled out with students was also consistent. Um, we have a very big school of over 1,100 kids and we wanted to make sure that really all of the students were receiving the same message and the same lessons. The district has engaged parents around digital citizenship issues in a number of ways. We send home parent tip sheets when we do a specific lesson on a specific topic. Um, so we will send home information to parents that relates to that lesson um, that their students may have just done in school. So that they could also have the same types of conversations that we were having with students at school at home. One of the ways that we support district-wide is to work with the Montgomery County Council of Parent Teachers Association. We also have parent academies which are um, meetings that happen in the evening and they're kind of quarterly and they travel around to different areas in the county so that people can have access to the information and not have to come to one centralized location, but more having it right within their communities. So the responses that we have received from parents have been overwhelmingly you know, positive. Um, we got a lot of feedback thanking us for the resources that are available to them. You know, they particularly like that there's the alignment with the parent tip sheets and the family activities that come home when their students have been engaging in some of the content within the school day. I have noticed that when we teach the digital citizenship lessons, there is a, a positive outcome. I think that it empowers students to know that there are positive ways that they can interact with each other. And, um, and I think it's important for them to see us as adults be the leaders in, in, guiding, uh, in guiding those decisions that they're making. The information that common sense education imparts for our students is so critical, especially as they are continuing to interact with technology um, in terms of their education, but as well as outside when they leave us um, so that they learn how to navigate and just how to be more responsible, make better decisions, um, choices, things that might impact their future. Our greatest achievement um, around digital citizenship would be earning common sense recognition as a school with, um, after our first year of the program. Um, it was a lot of work and a lot went into it and our teachers um, really bought into all of the lessons and making sure that all of the students were getting that consistent message about the importance of digital citizenship. We really spend a lot of time uh, recognizing students for the positive things that they do. So if a student has a positive interaction with another student or staff member, or if a student really consistently displays uh, our core values of courtesy, safety, and integrity, if they display those core values, we like to recognize them. So we do a lot of things at the school level to make sure we're recognizing positive behaviors of students to really amplify that positivity among our kids and for them to know that we're paying attention to the good things that they're doing. A second achievement that we are proud of is that Montgomery County Public Schools is recognized as a common sense district um, for the 2017 to 2019 period of time. Um, again, we'll be applying uh, for future as well. And, you know, based on our numbers currently, I have no doubt that we'll be able to achieve that. Um, but that was something that was recognized by our superintendent as well as our Board of Education. Um, we uh, had a specialized plaque made that is now hanging at our school board um, in the hallway that recognizes that achievement. If I were to give any words of advice to other administrators, other uh, principals, it would be that um, for them to take a look at the types of challenges that they're seeing among their students and to really tailor their messages and their lessons to those challenges that they're seeing. I would say really be willing to work with your staff and take advice from your staff and get their feedback so that they buy into the whole process because really um, to implement the common sense education as it's meant to be implemented, you need to have buy-in from all of your staff in the entire school. You want to make sure you've included 
the students, number one, because they're going to be receiving the information. You've included um, parents, community members, you've included the school staff, you've included principals. It doesn't just sit with one person or with one office, but everybody owns it because everybody is involved in the life of our students.